All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming today. This is uh, an exciting webinar. We're, we're really excited to, to provide for you uh, just a little bit more about this learning series. This is a free webinar learning series sponsored by our company. It used to be called WECO Accessibility Services. We're just in the process of rebranding to Digital Accessibility by WECO so people know more about the type of accessibility we do. And we do provide accessibility manual audits. We're really good at it. That is uh, something that we're trusted to do in the legal space uh, as well as in just the business space. We offer a lot of different types of training, including technical training for WCAG application and sensitivity awareness. And of course, we're really well known for our disability focused UX testing. We have a team of testers that work with us who live with disabilities that test remotely from home. It's something that we have actually perfected a method for. We're also moving into diversity and employment consulting this year. So welcome. I just want to let everybody know that this is going to be a very interactive webinar. We're a small group, which I think is great. And we are encouraging you to enter your questions as we're presenting into the chat box and you can go ahead and do that and we i and uh patty patty constant our client relations specialist who is on the call with us will pull those questions into the conversation and keep an eye on them uh patty would you mind also adding your email address in if anybody is having a lot of trouble, you can also email Patty and let her know. Um, at this particular webinar uh, is not live captioned because we did not receive requests for it. So a little bit more about us. We are digital accessibility experts who also live with disabilities. And our goal at Digital Accessibility by WECO is to make the world more accessible for everyone. And we do that by putting you in direct touch with subject matter experts who live with disabilities. We're also members of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals because simulations can't replace real human experience. So this is what we're about. And this slide shows a picture of one of our accessibility specialists. Okay, it's advancing on its own. We've had this problem in the past. And I, it's, I think the new version of PowerPoint automatically, uh, automatically uses a timer for some reason. And there we go, back in. But this is one of our accessibility specialists, Dane, who uses a combination of both JAWS screen reader and screen magnification. He's a really great example of how people living with disabilities can't be siloed into just one. Sometimes we have more than one and sometimes they merge and for Dane, he needs to have a screen magnification, but using a screen reader also really helps him. So a little bit more about what we offer to you that is free. WECO offers a free digital accessibility assessment where you get to work with a certified tester and a WECO accessibility specialist. It gives you a taste of what we do. It will not tell you everything that you need to fix, but it's gonna give you a baseline to go on. You can sign up for that on the front page of our website. There's a big bar in the middle that allows you to sign up for that, or you can also reach out to Patty or Maureen and we'll help you do that. That's part of our mission. Other free resources that are available on our website free accessibility library. We have recordings of webinars like these that you're going to be able to access in the future. And you can also sign up for our free blog and email quick tips, because we believe that accessibility is a skill that you can learn and that everyone can learn it. Our website is thewecoweco.com, -E and these are under the resource tab. This slide shows a illustration of a woman sitting at a desk. 
Um, just a little bit more before we get into the content. My name is Lynn Wehrman. I am the president and founder and the director of public relations here at WECO. I am a petite white woman with short blonde hair, wearing glasses, earrings, and my WECO sweater. So um, we will be doing a lot of audio description as we go along because that's just par for the course of how we do business at WECO and how we work with each other every day. So this is a really cool webinar that we came up with as we were filming footage for our new online on-demand self-training portal that's going to release in the end of April. And we were, were gives you an idea of the stuff that we're going to be having in this portal. You can sign up and, and pay for individual modules, or you can have a full membership and access everything. And we realized that this was what was happening when Maureen and I were filming this was pretty cool and that we really needed to make a webinar out of it. So we're gonna be showing footage that I was shooting when I was at her home. It's not totally edited, so, um, but we wanted Maureen on the line to be able to answer questions. It was just easier for us to demonstrate where I could be in person with Maureen and showing her hands close up. So you're gonna be able to see a lot of detail about Braille and how Maureen interacts with Braille in this workshop. And this is a title slide with our new logo and the title of the webinar series. So I'd like to introduce, first of all, your host for today is Maureen Pranghofer. Maureen is one of these people that has been with us from the start. I remember Maureen's interview in our first kind of uh, temporary office we were in, and she was just so impressive. Uh, I don't know if Maureen knows this, but we actually did not have space for her on the team, but I was so impressed with her that I made space. <laughs> so, and I think you will be too. She is a lead certified tester at WECO, which is one of our more accomplished tester roles. She is also on our staff team as a senior client relations specialist, and our client relations specialists are sales and customer service. So I am going to allow Maureen, uh, is there anything you'd like to add in the introduction, Maureen? No, just say good morning to everyone and that I'm very happy to be here. And please, if you think of questions, stick them in the chat box or email them to Patty. Excellent. Great. Okay. So Maureen is going to start out first by explaining to us where Braille came from. And I was pretty fascinated by this because I did not know it. And so I'm just going to share the sound and start the video. If you do not hear this, please indicate in the chat box if, if anything goes wrong with audio visual, visual, we'll take care of it. Okay. Take three. Go ahead. My oh, name is Marie. I'm sorry, you're going to need to turn up your volume all the way. Marina is very soft spoken and we did not have a chance to enhance the audio. So um, keep yourself muted. Um, so it doesn't echo in, and then just turn up your audio all the way. I'm praying offer. I work for WECO as a tester and in client relations. I'm here to talk about Braille. Braille, as you know, is the tactile system of reading and writing that blind people use. It's called Braille because it was invented by a Frenchman named Louis Braille. Louis Braille was born in the early 1800s. His father was a harness maker. At the age of three, Lewis was imitating his father. He had a piece of leather and a sharp tool called an awl. He went to push the awl in the leather and it slipped and poked his eye. He got an infection in that eye which quickly spread to the other eye and soon he was totally blind. At that time, people in France were talking about the possibility of could blind children be educated if they were in a special school. So it was a good thing that Lewis lived there because it was the only place in the world that was really progressive that way. He went to the school when he was 10. At the time, the only way blind people had to read was 
people would take string or twigs and make the shape of print letters and paste them on a page. So as you can imagine, you could maybe only get one short sentence per page. So books were expensive and very impractical. When Lewis was in his late teens, a man named Charles Barbie was working with the French military. He was trying to figure out a way to make it so that soldiers could communicate at night. He called his invention night writing. It was composed of 12 groups of dots in 36 dots. The system that Barbie invented was quickly uh, tossed away because soldiers found it to be very impractical. They couldn't remember the dot combinations. But Braille had seen this invention because they had brought it to the school for the blind just to see if people could feel the dots. He thought, I wonder if a system that was similar could be used. And that's how Braille was invented. Okay, great. You're on mute. Oh, sorry. We'll just take a pause. Are there any uh, questions or comments in the chat in the chat to share, Patty? Nope, nothing yet. Okay, then we'll just keep moving along. Next segment. Take three. All right, take one. So the system that Lewis Braille designed is based on something called the Braille cell. And if there's anything to remember in this whole presentation, it is. is that cell. As you can see in the picture, the braille cell is composed of six dots. They're shaped like the number six on a dice. There's two columns with dots numbered one, two, three on the left side and four, five, six on the right side. It's very important to remember this configuration and the numbers that go with the dots. You can go ahead and just continue if you want. So there are three ways to write Braille. The first way is through the use of a Perkins Braille writer. And then I'm going to demonstrate that. Oh. Okay. So this just kind of lays out um, what we're going to be demonstrating on the laptop. Any comments or questions? Move on. All right, take three. So Braille, we're just going to take a slight break here and just uh, give you a little bit of perspective. Braille is a text alternative. And if, if you work with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines or WCAG, you've seen this. And it's not uncommon for us to have clients say, what is a text alternative? <laughs> it can be frightening, but Braille is actually one of those text alternatives. So it is an option that someone may use instead of hearing the text read out loud to them with a screen reader. And this photograph shows Maureen's Braille laptop and her hands on it. So we just wanted to give you that little bit of background. In what ways does Braille translate? electronically, of course, to a Braille laptop. You're going to be watching that magic shortly. And also it can be printed via a Braille embosser. So we're going to have Maureen elaborate on this in the next slides on how it translates digitally. Go. Refreshable Braille is called Refreshable Braille because as you can see, there are, this, this is the screen and dots are popped up because there is something on the screen right now. So it is this recipe actually. So if I were to read it, it says for bean salad and then it says one because that's page one. I'm hitting my down arrow and watch. You can see that, okay, there's nothing there but this. That's the cursor and it's a blank line and down again 
and it says um, 42 ounces or four cans in uh, white beans. So you can read it again. 42, 14 ounces canned garbanzo beans. And you can read each line as you're going down the page. And so it's a wonderful way of, uh, for one thing, making it possible to read Braille without having to carry a huge book around. Now this is a dumb terminal in that it's hooked to my computer and it will not work without a screen reader with it. I'm using JAWS, which is in a mode right now where you can't hear it. But normally you can hear it. Full speech. It said full speech. And so now if I'm reading this way with it. One slash D LB green beans. Um, it says one slash D LB green beans. And what it actually says is one fourth pound green beans. So sometimes JAWS doesn't know what to do with um, some of the braille symbols and so I will use the d display to check. I very very often use this display with JAWS turned on at the same time to find out how things are spelled um, and just I just really like having the advantage of having both things there some speech and some braille. And next, I will go to showing you the Braille laptop. Okay, it looks like, do we have a question come in, Patty? Um, Debbie was just commenting in, on how cool it is. In the video, you can look closely and you can see those white dots becoming kind of bold or sticking up. So if people looked closely, they could see that in that video. That's all. Well. Okay, and you're going to get a better look at it in the next videos. So, go. So, we're going to take a look back first and take a look at printed Braille because I thought this was super fascinating. I wanted to share this section with you. I saw how you could use the Braille writer slate and stylus or an embosser to write Braille on paper. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of Braille is that it takes approximately three pages of Braille to equal each page of print. And so books are take up way much more space. All these books on my bookshelf, all of those 22 volumes, are one Bible. So I'm just going to take the smallest one out. Just this book is um, Proverbs through Song of Solomon. And um, so they are, you know, you can see that they take up more space. This book by itself is just the book of Psalms. And so, it's, you know, as you can see, it's just pages and pages of Braille. Now, the interesting thing is that you can, sighted people, if they look closely at this, it's my understanding, they can see the indented part. Wine people cannot see that. We just feel the outdented dots. So they're able to put dots on both sides of the pages by putting dots between the lines on this page, on that page. And that's how they, they do it on both sides. So having such large books is how blind people have read for years and years until the 1980s when someone came up with something called refreshable braille. Okay. Saw how you could use the braille right. Okay. We are going to move on now to the um, a tour of the Braille laptop keyboard. And you're going to get a really close look at uh, Maureen's Braille laptop here. 
So this is the uh, refreshable braille display laptop. And so it is at the desktop now and the, it has the 18 cells. Each of these keys is above a cell and you can move your cursor. If I push this, the cursor moves to that spot. It actually, um, it actually didn't. Okay, let's start again. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So it's at the desktop and I'm going to just go down through what is on the desktop. We have file manager, which contains your files. You have the word processor. You have a notepad. You have email. Um, let's see. Let's do email. You have a media player. You have an organizer, which is where the calendar is. You have the web tools, which is your web browser, and some utilities, uh, a setup menu, a help menu, and because I said this is an Android app, and there's your Play Store where you can purchase different Google apps and all apps. So this part up here is, remember, the Braille cell. These are dots one, two, three. It's like the Perkins, but it's a little different. Four, five, six. This is the space bar. This is the backspace. And this is the enter. Okay. Do we have any questions or thoughts? That was a lot of information. So other ways that Braille can make life easier for people, um, and I'm going to have um, Maureen talk about this in a minute. Um, but and, and in fact, Maureen, why don't you just take over? <laughs> this is the part where we talked about how you use Braille in, in other ways. And I'm showing on this slide is a close up of Maureen's stove where you can see that Braille stickers are imposed over the bacon Braille features. So, because Maureen cooks, so makes it easier. Take it away, Maureen. So, I just love Braille because uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do digitally, but, you know, you can't read your stove digitally. You can't uh, play games digitally. Well, some you can you know, describe video games, but um, I, you can play, I play cards. I'm a very avid Scrabble player. Um, there's things called overlays, which in web areas, we don't think that they're good, but in Braille, they're great. And they're plastic things with uh, sticky stuff on the other side. And they, you know, for example, my Scrabble game has something where you can feel where the lines are on the board and then it has braille on top of where the print is and braille on the tiles and all the uh, opponents that I play with are cited basically. And so I like it for all kinds of games and uh, it's just, it makes it so there's so many things that you can identify. And uh, so I just love braille and uh, but I think one thing you shared with me too was being on a vacation once and having a Braille book for the first time and being able to sit in the cabin with your family where everybody was doing their own thing and you were reading your Braille book and what a feeling of independence and freedom that was for you. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, I was born with some vision and didn't, well, I actually taught myself Braille, um, with the aid of some blind friends when I was 14, because I was at a camp for disabled kids and they put all the blind kids in one cabin and they would turn the lights off and everybody would get out their games and start playing stuff and I couldn't. And they'd be reading and I couldn't because I read print. Um, and so I literally you know, grabbed one of my friends and said, show me what, what stuff is in Braille. And they started telling me and I learned the Braille alphabet and the 200 
56 contractions in two weeks. Now, it took me a year to get any speed up. Um, but I was so motivated to read. And by the time, you know, when I got so that I could read, uh, and I read much faster to myself than I did, for example, when I was reading that recipe. I remember going on vacation and bringing a Braille book for the first time. And it was just so wonderful to be able to sit with my family. And they were doing their own thing. And I was sitting and enjoying my book. And it wasn't like when I read print, I had to have my nose on the page. I had to have a certain lamp. There was one lamp in the house that I could use that was bright enough. And um, so it's just wonderful. And it gives you literacy and you know how to spell then and um unfortunately there are people that don't understand that and when their kids go to school then sometimes the schools say well it's just cheaper to do audio so we'll just do audio and the parents uh equate braille with someone that's totally blind and they don't want to think of their kids that way so some kids with low vision in fact many are not taught braille because of that and so what happens is then they don't have the literacy. Uh, I read about someone who did not know, because there were stories that they were reading audibly, they did not know that once upon a time was four words, because their stories all started that way. And, and being a literature major myself, I know that your brain, brains develop, your brain develops differently. Language helps, written language helps to brain development. Do we have some questions uh, or comments, Patty, that, to share? There were some, just some great comments about how cool it was to see here and learn how Braille can be used from Brian. Um, and Melanie agreed with that. And jo Jordy said, uh, never thought it worked that way. Thank you for the demonstration. Great. And we're going to get to more questions in just a second. I'm just going to wrap, wrap up the slides. I just wanted to uh, give credit to uh, our co-star, Walter Pranghofer, who is in the background of one of those videos out in the yard. Um, he is Marine's service dog, and I also call him the wonder dog. Uh, we love Walter. He's part of the part of the WECO family, so we had to give him some, some credit. So is there anything else that people would like to ask Maureen in these remaining minutes or comments about things that were really new to you that you never knew, anything you wanna share? And you can go ahead and unmute yourself. We're a small enough group. You can simply talk. Hi there, this is Brian. Um, thanks for the demonstration and stuff. That was, it was really cool to see. Um, my question, or, or maybe it's an assumption. So my assumption was the secondary device that you were um, demoing there. Um, you were talking about the different buttons there that correspond to the different Braille cells, right? So is that what you use to interact with, let's say like a form on a web page? then, if you're gonna add your name or email address or something like that into like an input field? Yes. Um, so if I push this, there are things that are called chords and those are a combination of the braille dots and the space bar. So if I push a space and the letter E, which is dots one five, it will look for a blank field where you could write something. And so then I just, uh, use the keys to write in that field and then um, if i hit space four or five it goes down to the next you know it's like using the tab and if it's coded correctly it will go down to the next field and so i can use that for writing and that's how when i'm in the word processor i can write you know uh, if I'm in a meeting or something, I'll take notes that way and um, I can write it. If I'm on a website, you might wonder, you know, I only see 18 characters at a time. How do I know? There's different things that you can push, some of those different chords. If I push the backspace and the letter F, which is dots one, two, four at the same time, it will look for the next heading, for example. Oh, um, sure. Okay. And if I 
um, am on a website and I'm going down line by line, if there's a link, there'll be the letters LN in front of the text. And so then I know that that particular spot has a link, or I can ask it with a cord to list all the links on the website. Thank you. Anything else in the chat box, Patty? Nothing else in the chat box. Okay. Well, we are at time. Um, we want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, and just to remind you that WECO is designed to be your digital accessibility department. If there's anything that we can do to help, you can always reach out to us via email, accessinfo at theweco.com. Our phone number is 855-849-5050, extension 1. And we will be making, uh, once we get this captioned and up, we'll let you know, and we'll have this recording available on our website soon. So we thank everybody for being here today. And thank you so much, Maureen, for sharing all of your great expertise and personal experience with Braille. And we can end the recording. <laughs>